Global Force, I'd like to welcome you to this week's media teleconference. Today we got two special guests, and none other than the uh, the new undisputed GFW Global Champion Eli Drake. Welcome, Eli. And new. What's going on, everybody? We also can, can welcome his trusty tag team partner, one of the most feared men in uh, wrestling, Chris Adonis. Welcome. What's going on? And uh, how about we go with Mr. Adonis to you, all right? You got it, Mr. Adonis. I'm going to give you the, the opening uh, statement. Your thoughts on what's going on these days? Uh, well, first of all, I'd have to start with uh, sending our best wishes out to all the people in uh, H-Town, Houston, Texas, and all the areas affected by Harvey. Uh, I got friends down there, and it's uh, devastation like we've never seen. So uh, we definitely want to encourage everybody out there to, you know, if you can, donate to the Red, um, Red Cross or help out in any way you can, because uh, this is something that a lot of people are suffering through, and it's completely... Uh, just off of the watch. Perfect world champion, Eli Drake. What's up, everybody? You know, I, I got to second those sentiments. I mean, some of the images we're seeing, it's, uh, it's pretty rough looking down there. Uh, I, I think anybody, everybody needs to help any way they can. Uh, you know, if you've got boats close by, I've definitely seen, uh, you know, numbers, you can call the local police and whatnot and try and help out in that way to help get people out of the situation there is. Um, so yeah, I mean, donate, help out any way you can. Uh, I'm actually sending some money back now. So let's get in there and help, everybody. Sounds good. We're going to open it up for some questions, and uh, you can hit star six if you want to ask a question. Um, again, as I've asked in the past, we ask... <coughs> Please do not, again, do not get back in the queue for another question until we uh, give you the heads up so that everybody has a chance to talk to the world champion. Okay, I think we Mr. should... Mr. Drake? Yeah. Mr. Drake? Yes. Yeah. yeah, my name is Stephanie. I'm working for Theater Magazine. Uh, congratulations for being for earning your first Tiger GFW World Heavyweight Champion in this amazing match. Uh, I want to have your thoughts about about this concert match, which was absolutely amazing, uh, more than 30 minutes, I think. Uh, um, tell, tell us about this match and this amazing feeling of being the champion. Well, first of all, let me give you a little asterisk to that, because it was about uh, 45 minutes of TV time, but then you got to figure in commercial breaks and all that. So we're looking at almost about 60 minutes, actually, in ring time. That's one heck of a feat, and I I'm going to give a little bit of credit to Eddie Edwards, because he started right there where I was, and he made it all the way to the end. But the fact was, he didn't end up where I was. He didn't end up with the world title. He didn't end up with that global championship. But uh, going through all that, going coast to coast, coming out with that title, defying odds, defying everything that everybody thought would come out of there. Man, it, it, there's nothing better than raising that title up and you can just feel, just that feeling just rain down on you. There's nothing like it. Hello. Uh, this is a question for both of you. Uh, this is Riju from uh, Sports Kida in India. Uh, now, what is your reaction to what went down between Rosemary and Sexy Star at Triple Mania 25? And because it has uh, gone viral on the internet and everybody's talking about it right now, do you have a take on it? Well, I, I, I put it this way. Um, uh, very unprofessional uh, on Sexy Star's part. Um, I, I've, I've heard of a reputation of hers before. Uh, I don't know of it personally. I think I've only met her once or twice. Uh, and hopefully, for everybody's sake, this isn't something that's going to damage the relationship between uh, AAA and, uh, and GFW, and they'll hopefully handle it appropriately. I'm going there myself, actually, next week uh, to wrestle AAA to defend the global title. So... Uh, I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for things like that. I'm going to be on a little bit higher alert as far as that's concerned. Uh, and make sure nothing like that goes down while I'm there. Okay. 
Hey guys, pleasure to be here. It's James from Wrestling Epicenter Interactive Wrestling Radio. Mr. Drake, my question is for you. I had you on our show seven days before you won the world title, and it's like I had a crystal ball because I asked you specifically about <laughs> Josh Matthews' prediction. I guess my question would be, did you know at that point when I asked you that this was in the cards, and how excited are you to have it happen so quickly and not have to wait till the end of 2017? Well, I mean, the crazy thing with this business is you never know. Uh, so a lot of the things that come up, a lot of the things that happen, uh, a lot of that stuff is just uh, you fly by the seat of your pants. Um, and so excited to be in the position I'm in now, excited to be able to propel this company into the future is where I'm looking at it as opposed to digging into the past and an expectance to go into the future. Um, so uh, I dig it. I love it. And uh, I'm ready for this challenge because they're going to throw everything they can at me and I'm just going to keep on taking it. And I'm asking for more, quite frankly. Uh, I'm Ryan Fisher from Total Wrestling Magazine. First of all, um, congratulations, Eli, on winning the title. Thank you, Ronald. My question is, obviously we saw the Impact debut of Johnny Impact in the Gauntlet match. What's your take on his arrival? Uh, well, look. I mean, you you look at the guy. He looks like uh, he looks like a star. You could say a rock star. You could say. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people say that uh, there are some wrestlers that are more style than substance. And I'd say maybe that's Johnny Impact. I don't know yet. I haven't gotten enough of the feel of him. But when I look at him and I look at me, I figure with me, simplicity is key. What you see is what you get. And the substance is there. I don't need a whole lot of flashy style. I don't need a whole lot of flashy moves. I don't need a flashy wardrobe. I come in there. I give you what you're going to see. I give you what you're looking for. And at the end of the day, I get the job done, as you see, because I'm holding that global title. Mr. Adonis, your take on Johnny Impact. He has nothing to say. He's disgusted. Clearly. But if he's looking to start anything with myself or my Meyer Drake or try to take the GFW Global Championship from him, he's going to have a problem, you know, history or no history. So, uh, you know, great to have him, but he better stay out of our way. Uh, Stephanie from Yocha Magazine again. Um, Stephanie, uh, if I can ask you to please not come back into queue. You, you've done this every week for us. There are other people who would like to ask questions, but go ahead with this question, but please do not come back into queue. We have other reporters who would like to talk to the champion. Uh, okay. Um, the, 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 the world that is coming and coming uh, in the recent conference call uh, was rebuilding GFW. Um, what is your opinion about this rebuilding? What do you think you can do to help rebuild the company? Well, I mean, look, I, I would say as far as uh, where we've been, uh, where we've come from, and where we're going to, uh, we are certainly in some stage of a rebuilding. Uh, but I think this is definitely a huge step in the right direction as far as... Uh, Again, looking ahead to the future, taking homegrown stars and putting the focus on them. Um, and it's still good to bring in uh, people who've, who've been in other places and who've amassed uh, resumes in other places. It's a great addition. Uh, but I think a lot of times if you put the focus on the homegrown stars, I think that that does us a great service. I think that helps to move us into the future. And then you work all of those parts together and I, I think that that's going to draw a greater audience. Uh, it's going to draw the audience to familiar faces that they've seen on other products. And it's now also going to turn those people onto faces they've never seen, which would be the homegrown talents here uh, in Impact. So everybody has a place. Everybody's got a job as far as in this whole system that is GFW. Uh, and, and I think that uh, it is a rebuilding process, but I think there's a lot of uh, light at the end of the tunnel from everything I'm seeing. 
And if I can add a little addendum with Eli Drake at the, at the helm, there's definitely a big light at the end of the tunnel. Mr. Adonis, Mr. Drake, this is uh, Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. Thank you for having me here, gentlemen. Yeah, what's up? Very good. My my question is to the champ. The champ, Eli Drake, it's been a long time coming, in, in, in our humble opinion here at OneWrestling.com. My question to you is uh, a lot of people on the quote-unquote IWC have asked this question or have made comparisons to your let's just say character as, let's say, uh, like a Stone Cold Steve Austin, or maybe even, uh, let's just say, uh, Ken Anderson. I personally feel that, that you have an identity all your own. What do you say to the people that say that? And I have to be honest, I, I'm quite happy to see that you partner yourself with someone like Chris Adonis, but are you worried about maybe watching your back and maybe Chris taking that title? Nah, Chris, Chris, is, uh, Chris is good people. Uh, Chris is in, I, I, I can't speak for him, but I think he's enjoying his thing. Say what you want about it, Chris. Hi, uh, hey, hey, I'm here to watch. For right now, I'm here to watch your back, Eli. I mean, I mean, you know, there were DNA over here, all right. And I'm happy to. I saw the way that they were screwing with Eli from the minute I got there. I've seen how hard he's worked before I even showed up at Impact Wrestling. I knew that I'm like this guy needs somebody to have his back, somebody who's going to be real with him. So. uh that's me. That's my role and uh, uh, with me and uh, Eli. I mean, we're the new, uh, this is the new era. This is the Drake and Adonis era of uh, GFW Impact Wrestling. And, uh, you know, things are looking good, just like us. And as far as you're talking about comparisons people are going to make. Hello there, it's Francis from Main Room Pot. First thing I want to say, congratulations to Eli Drake, the champion. And my question to you, Eli, um, First thing, um, who's the biggest threat or dummies, as you like to say, them on the roster um, at the moment to take away your title? Because there's a few people out there that um, probably are gunning for your title now. So, who do you think is the main threat out there for you? Well, I was still trying to answer the last guy's question, but uh, we didn't get to that yet. Um, <laughs> what, let me get, get back in a second. But what I was trying to say to the last guy was, look, if if, if People are going to make comparisons all the time. You look at basketball, you look at baseball, you look at football, they're always saying, here's the next Michael Jordan, or, uh, you know, here's the next uh, uh, Barry Bonds, or whatever it is. So people are going to make those comparisons, and I don't mind it, because if you're going to compare me to somebody like Steve Austin, or you're going to compare me to somebody like The Rock, or I forget who, who was the other guy that he said. I don't remember. But if you're going to compare me to somebody who is of legendary status, I will accept that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, on to your question, sir, uh, what I would say to that is my biggest threat. I think I'm my biggest threat. There's no bigger enemy. There's nobody who can beat me more than me. I'm the one guy that has to keep myself in check as far as keeping myself ready, staying ready. Muted. Staying in the ring making sure that everything is ready to rock. And as far as having a, a threat, everybody's got to... Lady, you better calm down. But look, the whole thing comes down to this, is that there are everybody, everybody's gunning for this title. That's the responsibility of being the champion. So who's the biggest threat? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But uh, at the end of the day... The biggest threat to me right now is myself. It's E. Y. Drake. Uh, Mr. Drake, obviously, um, him placing you first at number one and then number two at the uh, Gauntlet. How do you feel your relationship with Jim Cornette will be going forward? And likewise, Mr. Adonis, what's your thoughts on Jim Cornette? And you're looking at that tomorrow. Oh, well, I mean... Go ahead, go ahead, Eli. I, I, I was initially excited when Jim Cornette come in. When I saw that, I was like, oh, cool. This is going to be good. I think we'll see eye to eye. And then things just quickly and immediately fell apart. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see how things go. I, I know uh, I know Adonis kind of feels a, a way about it. So, tell him what you think. Well, well, I, you know, I've known Jimmy for years. I started out in this business with Jimmy, and uh, I think it didn't take long for you to see his, uh, as you know, well, and, and that's Jim Cornette stuck in the past. And 
that's what the one problem with Jim Cornette is he can't get out of 1972. So uh, whether we got to take him kicking and screaming into the new era of professional wrestling, we'll do it. I mean, like uh, Eli said, when I first saw, saw JC, Jim Cornette, I was happy to see him. It, it was nostalgic for me. It was like the beginning of the business. But then once again, JC starts screwing with us and we already have a problem. So, uh, you know, I, I think we have yet to see this relationship with Jim Cornette and how it pans out. Hey, guys, this is Sam Pierce from uh, Fight Network Toronto. Uh, Drake, this question's for you. Uh, with all the controversy surrounding the arrival of American Top Team in GFW, uh, what's your opinion on that situation, and uh, do you have a message for them? Well, uh, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, if you go back and you watch last week's Impact, where I end up coming up with the title, uh, we got to make sure that we don't have a problem. Uh, and what I mean by that is here I am. It's my time to shine. It's my time for that glow to be on me. And what happens? These goofs are down on the floor trying to take the shine away from me. Now, I'm going to let that slide this. But if that loud mouth idiot, Dan, Dan Rumpelmans, I don't know what his last name is. I really, truly, legitimately do not remember his last name. But uh, if, if these guys cannot keep themselves out of my way, <laughs> do whatever you want with food. Do whatever you want with anybody else. But do not have a problem here. Do not create a problem here because the champion of the world, the champion of the globe is here standing in the ring. It's my moment. Don't you dare take that away from me. That's my feelings on those guys. Mr. Dennis, what's your take on Dan Lambert and American Top Team? Dan Lambert, that's a dumbest thing. There it is. What's my take? Uh, honestly, I mean, it doesn't differ much from Eli. All I saw is Eli trying to have his moment and then ba basically creating chaos all around the ring. And, uh, you know what I mean? Like, we don't got to walk around with six dudes, America's top team. I mean, you know, they're such badasses, really. I mean, all I'm saying is we don't have a problem with them in business structure, and we don't necessarily want a problem with them. We just want them staying out of our business and staying out of our spotlight. Because we don't like that. We don't want to share our spotlight. Not the time and not the place, boys. That's all I'm saying. Hi, Eli. Hi, Chris. This is Raj with WrestlingEat.com. Um, oh. Eli, I just, Eli, I just wanted to get your opinion on uh, the previous champion, Alberto El Patron, and, and how that situation was handled. And if you think... Uh, Alberto should be brought back to GFW one day. Wow, look at this guy, hitting hard. Well, I'll just tell you this. Right now, as I stand here, in my kitchen, about to crack some delicious lunch, I uh, <laughs> all I can think to myself is, uh, I, I, I don't know whether we should have him back or not. Now, am I going to dig too deep in that? Probably not. I don't know. Everybody knows all the stuff that's gone down, all the controversy, all that kind of stuff. Personally, uh, I think for now we could do without it. Uh, but aside from that, who knows what the future holds. Hey, Champ, I think the bigger question is, what are you cooking for lunch? Let's not get into that. I, I beg you not to ask my personal questions right now, okay? Gotcha. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> it's macaroni and cheese, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, totally. no, actually, I'm, I'm over here rocking on some, uh, what do I have? I've got cod, I've got some broccoli, and a beautiful little layout of uh, beans and rice. Can't beat it. Ah, uh, there you go. You even got your fiber. That's my mind. What, uh, what's, what's the lunch uh, schedule for you? Lunch schedule for me is going to be uh, definitely some protein and some, uh, why are you, hold on, first of all, what are you why are you trying to find out uh what we're eating, huh? You think we're just going to give away our secrets, give away a diet plan? If you want a diet plan, go to LA Fitness and, you know, consult your local personal trainer. I'm not going to tell everybody what I'm eating. Well, I mean, there were, there were a lot of, you know, requests to find out the diet that delivers these sculpted physiques. Well, of course, because people don't want to go... People want to know our secrets, and uh, quite frankly, we're not personal trainers. We're not dietitians. We're not going to tell you our secrets. You know, like I said, go to your local LA Fitness. You get yourself a personal trainer, and you can try. You can try to aspire to look like the Adonis. You can try to aspire to look like the champ Eli Drake. But 
quite frankly, it probably ain't going to happen for you. So keep dreaming. Well, here's, we'll just move on to the next question. Chris and Eli, <laughs> Tim Porcelain with MiamiHerald.com. Uh, Chris, what has impressed you about Eli? And Eli, what has the partnership been like you and Chris? Uh, well, I guess I'll, I'll start with that opening question on Eli. Uh, I, when I see Eli, I see a guy who has, uh, he is a, a homegrown talent for, um, although he's been in wrestling for a long time, he's a homegrown talent in GFW, uh, you know, formerly TNA, obviously, and he's worked his ass off. I mean, he's done, I've seen this guy ascend, and I mean, we've even had conversations before I showed up to Impact Wrestling about uh, kind of where he was at and him, you know, telling me, and like, uh, yeah, it was, I didn't, quite frankly, I didn't realize how much we had in common either until we actually met, and uh, and I showed up in Impact Wrestling. I thought he was uh, a much different guy than he was, but I realized that real quick that, I mean, this guy's just like me, and then, uh, like I said, uh, you know, me being uh, a new talent here in GFW, I was looking around the landscape, seeing who it is exactly that, uh, I could align myself with someone who was like-minded to myself. And I also saw uh, Eli Drake getting screwed every single week, week by week. And, you know, at that point, I think, uh, I mean, it was nothing that was planned on our part, but we organically kind of came together. And since then, uh, I think it's been uh, obviously a great relationship. And uh, I'm happy to see Eli Drake not get screwed around every week and finally take the spot that I think uh, he deserves. And I think that all the uh, fans also wanted to see, and that's him being at the top of the mountain. And I'm, I'm proud to stand right there next to him, you know, just knowing how much he's been through to get there. I, uh, I, I actually remember it was one of those, uh, one of the first Florida trips there where we were uh, filming down there where there were just a bunch of conversations where it was like, oh, wait, you're into that too? Or, oh, wait, you feel this way too about that? Or, you know, whatever it was. And it was just, there was a click. But if I can also add an addendum to what uh, Chris was just saying, I do remember the very first time we stepped in the ring together, we were actually on opposing sides. And I think this is where we both we both got each other's attention in that, in that sense. And I remember there was one point in time where I was, I think I said to him, I was just like, man, I was like, you move really good for a big dude in there. And he, I remember he actually said to somebody else, you know, that Eli Drake is deceptively strong. And it was just kind of, we had almost like an understanding at that point, like, wait a minute, there could be a benefit here. Uh, and, and, and as far as that's concerned, now we're seeing those benefits start to pay off. We're reaping the, we're reaping the benefits. We're cashing the dividends. And here we are. We got a global chance. Hey guys, uh, this is Akhilesh from the Ringside View India. Uh, my question is for Eli. Eli, uh, previously you talked about Percy Pringle, a.k.a. Paul Bearer, working closely with you and how uh, you were in his thoughts even his last day. So now you're the GFW champion. What do you just make of your journey and uh, what Percy did for you? Well, I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, I, I've been 14 years doing this thing and uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of the time that I spent in business, some of it was me shooting myself in the foot. Some of it was me not knowing how to ask for a job, not knowing how to advance, uh, and then coming across a guy like Percy Pringle who could kind of give me advice, give me um, guidance as far as what to do, where to go, um, or even to back up some of the ideas that I had. Uh, it was an amazing tool because here's a guy who's managed amazing talents throughout the world, a guy who's managed Steve Austin, who's managed Rick Rude, who's managed The Undertaker, and, and continue on and on. Um, and to have that guy in my corner for two or three years, and to be able to use him as a resource, and, and to also have him as a friend, you can't ask for anything better, and I think he came up at just the perfect time in my career. Uh, and, and I do miss that guy on a daily basis, because we used to talk very regularly. Uh, and it was always great to see him when he come out to L.A. to do the Hollywood tapings. So uh, just a, just an amazing guy uh, and a lot of fun, for sure. Hi, guys. Ryan Bowman from TheGrillFishing.com. 
Um, you guys are part of a stable of young veterans that Global Force Wrestling put together. Someone mentioned Johnny Impact. ec 3 has been around for a while. Uh, it seems like a group of guys that have all just been sort of waiting on their chance. Um, how excited are you guys uh, about being able to work with a, a group of, of guys that are uh, around the same age but uh, know what they're doing in the ring and, and are looking to maybe uh, take it to the next level? Thanks. Well, first of all, before I answer that, I just want to make sure you're okay. Do we need to send uh, emergency? <laughs> yeah. you, know, you don't sound so good, bro. Sounds like you were kidnapped over there. That was kidnapped for you. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's great. You, you, you've got all these guys who uh, are super, super hungry. Um, and, and we're hungry to make this product better. We're, we're hungry to get GFW to be bigger than it's ever been. Uh, bigger than anybody could ever imagine, and, and we just want to be recognized for the uh, for the the, the the great art and work that we're putting on. Um, because I, I think that we're doing amazing things, and unfortunately, because of maybe decisions of the past or whatever, uh, our platform has become smaller. And I think that that challenge of uh, you know growing that platform, I think. It's huge. I think it gives a lot of hunger, a lot of drive to a lot of the guys and girls who are there. Um, mm -hmm. I've had opportunities to go other places. I know other guys have had opportunities to go other places, and I've turned it down because, well, first of all, I'm getting paid decently, uh, so I can't complain there. I'm making money, and I'm feeling good. I'm in a good place. But aside from that, I, I want the challenge of taking this company that's had some hard times and now moving that thing up. I would rather do that than go into a place that's already established and huge and just get lost as a cog in the wheel. I would rather go ahead and take something and make it enormous from, from very low, uh, humble beginnings, if you will. That's just my philosophy, though. But I, I think that philosophy carries over to a lot of the talent there. I did want to uh, give you guys a heads up after uh, getting a few text messages. Yes, you may chime in if you have another question. But one, one I just got from an email that uh, a reporter had to, had to get going. He wanted to know, Eli, who are the top five dummies in GFW? Oh, boy. Top five. Here we go. Oh, wow. Let's see. Do I need to order these out? I'm going to say uh, let's go number five. Number five. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, the whole American top team, they get, uh, they get honorable mention because they try to steal a spotlight. Dummy, yeah. Uh, let's see, number four. I'm going to say uh, Bruce Pritchard. I haven't seen his face around a little bit, and I'm okay with that. Because that guy, uh, he wanted to go ahead and hold this guy down. Dummy, yeah, there he is. Let's go down to number three. Number three. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say it's a tie between, no, no, no. we got to make a bit of choice here. I'm going to say number three got to be Moose. Moose wins. Number I was going to say Moose. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> then I go to number two, and I'm going to say Jim Cornette. Sonny, yeah, there he is. And number one. Thank you. Number one, who is the guy knocking on my door, the guy who just walks in, and the guy who just thinks that he's going to walk into impact? And he saw it on night one. He was just going to suddenly be the global champion. And then who got the carpet yanked right out from under him? Johnny Impact. Dummy number one, everybody. There he is. You got your top five. Mr. Donis, you, you going to echo that, or you want to add anybody to the list? Oh, I was just dying for him to say Moose. I was, uh, you know, his number, I think he took him at number three. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think a lot of those are interchangeable. Uh, he got Jim Cornette in the number two. I was definitely agree with him on that one. I, I mean, I put Jim Cornette, I put Moose in my top five. Uh, definitely Johnny Impact for coming in thinking he's going to, yeah, exactly, like he's going to come in, waltz in here, and just take the championship on his first night, give me a break. But, uh, no, that ain't happening. Yeah, I have to agree. I know. I, uh, I echo his sentiments, but I'd like to put a, uh, exclamation point behind Moose 
and uh, we'll just leave it at that. Gentlemen, this is Big Ray again for OneWrestling.com. I have a question to sure. both of you. Now, Eli Drake obviously would make a well is, is a fantastic world heavyweight champion, and again, it's about time. We, again, here at OneWrestling.com, we support the bad guys. But with all that being said, what are the chances that you two gentlemen, well, you know, I mean, uh, you know, bad guy, the good guys and the bad guys in wrestling. But all that being said, gentlemen, what are the chances that you two would combine your strengths to try to take the GSW tag team titles. Oh, I mean, we're not bad guys. If you look at us, we're not, we're, 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 have you heard of those people? They are in love with us. They are enthralled with us. They're always chanting DNA, Eli Drake, hold down this. They're chanting all that crap. These are the good guys in wrestling talking to you right now. Yeah, but aside from that, and tag team titles, global titles, any titles we want. What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if they want to line up the tag title belts and uh, hand it to us on a platter, which just means just putting us in a match, I mean, sure, we'll take it. The more gold, the better. I mean, hell, we, everybody knows we look good in gold. That's for damn sure. So, you know, like, like my man Eli said, the champ, I mean, it's not necessarily on our, on our list of things to do, but we always look good with a little more gold to add to our uh, Rolexes and whatnot. So we'll take the tag belts. We'll take the grand championship. We'll take whatever you got. But uh, like I said, right now, I think we got bigger fish. It's the fact that uh, Eli is the uh, at the top of the mountain, and we need to make sure we keep him there. And uh, that's our priority right now. And, you know, they say that uh, like attracts like. We we're already holding some gold right now, so it wouldn't be that far fetched that we might be able to go ahead and snatch some more. Uh, hi, it's Bill Samuel from Real Sport. I realize I forgot to mention my name in the last question. Uh, you've just talked about adding gold. Uh, this past weekend, Eddie Edwards just won the GHC heavyweight belt at Pro Wrestling Noah. So my question for both of you is, are there any belts at any of GSW's uh, sister promotions uh, like AAA or NOAA that you guys have your eyes on? Well, look, my, my goal, I'm looking to take over the world. That's all I know. And uh, whether that means just going around and defending the GSW title or if that means going around and taking titles from other companies, I'm all with it. Uh, the thing is, I got everybody under the sun gunning for this global title. Um, now, if that affords me the opportunity to wrestle for other titles or we go title for title, I am down. Yeah. yeah it don't matter if it's AAA. It don't matter if it's NOAA. I mean, shoot. We got, we got our passports. We're ready to go. So, you know, any gold... Any goal on us looks good, so we're game. That's port ready. Hello, this is uh, Riju from Sportskira in India again. Uh, my question is, uh, what do you guys think of celebrities in uh, inside the wrestling ring? And how was it working with a non-wrestler like D'Angelo Williams? Mm. Let me take this, Eva. Well, uh, as far as um, working with a non-wrestler, uh, it's basically saying you, you bring in somebody like that, a guy who actually he, he picked it up pretty well as far as wrestling is concerned, um, and uh, you know he was able to have a, a hell of a dance partner, a couple of dance partners, uh, and uh, you know everything turned out pretty well. So I mean. You can cross promote and bring new eyes into uh, what we're doing. I think that's always a plus. Uh, at the same time, you know, don't go getting too familiar. Uh, you know, don't, don't walk into my room. Don't don't walk into my home. I think you're gonna take it over. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, McGregor Mayweather. I mean, McGregor had a nice showing. Did he win the? No. And uh, D'Angelo Williams, he had a great showing. I mean, yeah, technically, uh, 
technically I went through the table, but you know, if this was a real wrestling match, D'Angelo Williams would get killed by either myself or Eli Drake. That's right. No, no tables, no nothing. Uh, hi, this is uh, Raj Geary with Wrestling Eight dot com again. Uh, my question is for Chris. Chris, how is it working uh, with DFW compared to other companies in the past that you've been with? Um, how's it working for uh, Global Forest Wrestling? Well, uh, I have to say I am a part of a group, uh, and I'm talking not talking about Eli Drake and myself just specifically, but I'm talking about basically the whole roster, the whole uh, team of Global Forest Wrestling. And, you know, I think uh, kind of to go back to some of uh, Eli's statements earlier, I think uh, it's very exciting to be part of a promotion that has such room for growth. And we went through our reboot. But I, what I see right now is an organization that's coming together. It's uh, basically trimmed a lot of the fat and we we know the direction that we're going, and everybody on the on the crew is hungry. Everybody wants to do like you know. Everybody wants to part. So uh, for me, this is exciting to be a part of something like this, and not necessarily be a part of uh, you know like a big machine where you could get lost in the shuffle just so quickly, and uh, be a part of something that we can all help grow together. Something that's uh, you know with with everything that's happened over the last year and we basically had a whole, you know, a change in management, obviously a change in uh, the whole cabinet, so to speak. And, uh, you know, I just think, uh, with, with the, the people we have running the office now and the talent that we have to work with and everybody basically uh, getting off on the right direction. Uh, this is exciting to see what we can do in the future. It's exciting to see how we can propel impact wrestling and really, make it a good alternative uh, to any other wrestling programs out there. And not even to mention just some of the uh, exciting things that we're doing beyond just our, uh, the talent, our regular um, GFW talent, just our cross promotion with uh, bringing in guys like Garza and from Mexico and our guys from Japan. And you're getting to see a lot of uh, unique and different matchups that you wouldn't necessarily get to see anywhere else. So, uh, I think we're on. We're building momentum now. I think we're out of the, uh, the uh, you know, out of the worst of, uh, of the reboot and everything, and we're actually like we're on the route now. We're in direction. We're on the right direction. So this is uh, exciting. It's very exciting. If you're familiar with Howard Stern, you can either build up K Rock or you can get lost in WNBC. WNBC. <laughs> Can we, throw, can we throw out a Baba Booey somewhere? Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. I'm not going to finish that. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> we'll save that for person. <laughs> um, hello, this is uh, Riju from uh, Sportskida again. My question is, uh, both of you wrestled in India. How was it different from wrestling in the United States? I, I personally <laughs> loved India. Um, Every day, I got uh, the most delicious food. I love a little spice in my life, uh, I'll be honest. And um, my uh, personal motto when it comes to women, if you're brown, um, although that's not exclusive. I also like white women. I like uh, Asian women. I like black women. I like them all. If you're hot, knock my door. I'll answer. But aside from that, as far as, uh, as, far as wrestling in India, uh, you know, the business is the same. Uh, it's all a matter of going in there. You got a goal. You got a goal. You get in there. Watch out, everybody. You got a goal. You get that done. Uh, but the crowd over there was very passionate. They were very attentive. Uh, and they were in all the way. So I can say that uh, I did appreciate the uh, the passion of the audience 100%. Can we, can we just let that, uh, if they're brown, I'm down statement just settle for a minute because that was uh <laughs> oh man i love that I, I didn't hear anything you said after that <laughs> I'll, hey i'll say the same thing though we hey we were showing a lot of love in india just like everywhere else in the world but india is definitely a very friendly place a couple of the 
guys are a little too friendly, I must say. And uh, the ice and uh, they put in my drink scares me a little bit. But outside of that, it's a lovely place to go and work and wrestle. And, and uh, like I said, uh, Eli Drake and myself, I mean, wherever we go on this globe, we get massive love. And uh, India was no different. Nothing but love from the minute we arrived there. They rolled out the red carpets for us. They started. To, they gave us curry. I mean, it was freaking awesome. Delicious. Delicious. Eli, you worked in TV prior, outside of wrestling. Does being the champ open up some more doors to do that in the future? Well, I mean, I, look, I, I've been a wrestler before I was ever in any other TV or anything like that, just obviously on a smaller level. But, uh, yeah, I mean, th throughout the years as I was toiling, trying to uh, build something with wrestling, I, I had a little, um, I, I'd at least dip my toe into the TV realm as far as, uh, you know, I've done, uh, I've done some commercials. I've done uh, some Animal Planet TV shows. Um, of course, I was on the, uh, the Hero with the Rock. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's the whole idea with this, is, is let's branch out, let's get my face, let's get Adonis' face, let's get everybody, I tell you what, I'm going to be completely unselfish for about 30 seconds, and I'm going to say, let's get everybody's face in GFW on as many different platforms as we possibly can, cross-promote, bring the eyes in, and I think by doing that, first of all, we build GFW, and we also get to build our personal brand within ourselves. Uh, because, look, let's be honest, this business is very physical. Uh, it, it, our bodies get battered and beaten. Hell, I'm still recovering with a black eye right now as we speak from the very last night of taping. Um, and the fact is, at some point, the body's not going to be able to take this forever. So if I can take this that I'm doing now and parlay that into an entertainment career of some sort with my gift of gab, that's a natural fit right there. I am in 100%. Yeah. So Eli, as a follow-up to that question, would you uh, would you go see Johnny Impact's new movie Boone? Sure, why not? I'll take a look at that crap. Let's see. Uh, let's see if that's any good. Uh, and actually, I tell you what. Look, if he wants to hit me up and put me in the next one, let's do it. I, I can work out a deal. We can talk. Um, you know, uh, Boone. They were giving out the DVDs. I think last time we were in Orlando, nobody gave me one. Where's my DVD? Oh. Hi, hi, Eli. This is Raj with Wrestling Inc. Uh, com again. Um, I had a question. You you mentioned being on the the Hero uh, with the Rock. I was wondering uh, if you got to interact with the Rock much, and and if he gave you any advice uh, on your wrestling career. Uh, well, yes, I got to interact because uh, I mean we were there. We had a lot of uh, time together as far as the teams were concerned. Not a lot of like deep interaction just because that guy is on the craziest schedule you've ever seen. I mean, while we were filming, he was currently WWE champ at the time, so he was, uh, you know, he was flying in and out of town, going to do Raw and SmackDown, going to do movie premieres, and then coming back to film every day. Um, so, you know, there was a little bit of stuff, a little bit of time. Uh, I remember the one time we did a press junket in Miami, and he actually imitated me. I thought that was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. Uh, and, and it was kind of an honor in a lot of ways because he was a guy I really idolized and looked up to in high school, and now he's imitating, making fun of me, whatever. So that was pretty cool. Uh, at the same time, I, I didn't really get any career advice necessarily. Um, I, I kind of, I, like, you know, I, I, I spoke with his manager a bunch uh, through email, his ex-wife, uh, Danny Garcia. Um, we kept contact there for a little bit, and, uh, you know, she would kind of give me a little bits of advice because <laughs> I kept talking about how I wanted to do other things um, in entertainment outside of wrestling and she was just telling me, you know, build my brand uh, get as big as I can on this platform and then uh, that'll assist big time in moving on to another platform if I so desire Hello again, it's Francis from In Ring Pop. Um, I want to say thank you, um, Eli J, for being here. My question is this. Um, 
that at the moment you're the uh, champion at the moment, you're the undisputed champion. Um, are you going to be wrestling all over the world, maybe like U- the UK, for instance? Because at the moment it's like the UK needs some Eli Drake and come over and show us um, what a good champion you are. Yeah. Look, everywhere needs a little bit of Eli Drake. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, as far as what's happening, I'm going where they're sending me. And uh, next week, like I said, I'm going to AAA. Uh, I believe at the end of September, beginning of October, I'm going to be in NOAA in Japan. Um, so, I mean, look, if the dates come up, if the uh, money, if you got the money, honey, I got the time, is the old saying. So, uh, I'm ready to rock any time. And I'd love to go over to the U.K., and spread a little Kavorka over there. And I wouldn't mind picking up a couple little uh, British tarts while I'm over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I must say that was a real, that's a real classy move also. I think every fan should call in and thank you for being the champion before they uh, ask you a question. Well, I would like to thank me for being champion. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, hello, uh, Riju from uh, Sportskira again. Uh, my question is, there have been a lot of departures from the company uh, right now, from the Pope to Loki to Tyrus to Davy Richards. Do you think their uh, departure will affect uh, the company going forward? No, not at all. Um, I think that that's a normal part of business. That's a normal part of a uh, talent-driven business. Talent's going to come, talent's going to go. Um, sometimes people aren't happy with the positions, positions they're in or what they're doing. Uh, and sometimes the company's not happy with the position that the talent is in and what they're doing. And so sometimes just naturally you got to part with these. If you're not happy doing what you're doing, it's time to move on. Uh, and if, if the other talent is carrying their weight, honestly, that should have very little bearing, if any at all, because the show continues and we've got enough talent that if everybody's pulling their weight, I don't think that those departures make a big difference as far as the product's concerned. I, I feel um, I, it's never good to see people who you've uh, made a connection with or a bond with over the years or whatever as far as working together uh, to leave. But uh, if that happens, it, it has to happen. It's a natural part of the business. Uh, can't really do much about it other than wish them luck and uh, hope everything works out. Well, guys, we got about uh, time for maybe one or two more questions. I know the uh, the champ and Mr. Adonis have uh, a red carpet event today they have to get ready for, but we'll uh, we'll wrap it up with a few more questions here. Always, every day. Hello again, it's um, Francis from Amy Ring Pop. Um, my question is to um, both of you, like, um, as it's getting close to um, Bound for Glory, is um, both of you um, any particular people that you want to face against that Bound for Glory? Champ? Uh, personally, uh, personally, I'm just excited at the fact that here, here's Down for Glory. It's our biggest show of the year. It's our World Series. It's our Super Bowl. <laughs> and here's Drake and Adonis at the top. Eli Drake is the global champion. I'm going to be most likely defending it there. You can't get any better than that. That is top right now. You consider where I was only a few months ago, where I was only uh, a year ago, trying to get anybody to look my way, give me any slice of an opportunity. And then at some point it was just, you know what? I can't wait for that opportunity anymore. I got to go. Instead of trying to get my foot in the door, I got to knock that damn door down and go in and take my opportunity, create my opportunity, make my opportunity. I can't be, I cannot be a creature of circumstance. I need to be a creator of circumstance. And that's exactly what I was. There's no better place to be on top going into the biggest pay-per-view all year. I mean, just like Eli Drake said right there, and he's going to be defending the title, I'm sure, against a formidable opponent. So uh, it's going to be one hell of a pay-per-view. And that's, that, that opponent remains to be seen. We will find out who that is as time goes on. Um, it's Joe Samuel from Real Sport again. Um, it mentioned specifically in the email about this poll that, uh, Mr. Drake, you insisted that the call take place an hour later than usual. Why was that? 
Let's do this guy. Look, uh, I live on the I live on the on the uh, west coast of the United States, so we're three hours. We're behind. excited. Yes, indeed. So, look, when you're talking three hours behind, it's only what it was eleven o'clock here when you guys caught. Now, a lot of people they're already up. They're halfway through the day at eleven o'clock. Out here, there's a habit of making you ha you have a lot of late nights. And if you got late nights, maybe there's a young lady over, maybe who knows what's going on. But the bottom line is, I might not wake up until about 9.30. If that's the case, i got to make sure I'm clear-headed, I'm ready to rock by 11 o'clock. If I just roll right out of bed and just start talking at 10 o'clock, there is no telling what might come out of my mouth. Well, I mean, let's tell the truth. I mean, we had the at team treatment last night. We hit up the Playhouse. We hit up Avalon. I mean, bottle service style. I mean, it was a long night. So we, we, knew, we knew we were going to need the extra hour come today, all right? That's just the way the champ does it, and the Adonis does it when we roll out in Hollywood. You know what I mean? We get the treatment. And, and, and that's a shoot. You, you check my Instagram all the time. We, we got cabanas. We got bottle service. It's rolling every single week. Oh, yeah. We, we never wait in line. Dre's, it don't matter where it is. Hey, Mr. Adonis, I already uh, ticked you off once. I might as well go for the double header. You care to uh, enlighten everybody on tonight's red carpet extravaganza for you two? Oh, uh, well, I mean, we're, we got our bottle service. We've got, we actually went to the party bus. And I know a lot of people are being like, why would you wear the party bus? Why would you have a limo? The reason being is because we can't fit as many women into the limo as we can the party bus. And plus, if the party ain't popping, we're just going to bring them on the bus, and we're going to create the club ourselves. We're going to go mobile with this. So uh, basically, that's the dealio tonight. Same old deal. VIP list, Avalon, Playhouse, you name it, and uh, at least two or three bottles of Cristal, I'd say. Celebrating, celebrating, because you got to understand, we've been, we've been celebrating for the last, what is it, week, week and a half now, uh, since Eli's become the champion, and uh, we ain't stopped it, man. We uh, work hard, play hard. That's how we roll. Gentlemen, this is uh, Big Ray again from OneWrestling.com. You know, you're talking about going out and, and, and spending this money and, and having this liquor and the beautiful women, and that's fantastic. Oh, no, 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 but for, no. Uh -huh. don't, don't get it mistaken. Don't get it mistaken. There's no money being spent. Actually, I see. This stuff's free. I, I, my friend is a promoter, so he he provides the ladies. He provides the bottles. We ain't paying a damn thing. Well, Mr. Drake, with all due respect, I mean, you being a brand new heavyweight champion, and, and we know in, in, in the past there have been great champions in other sports like Mike Tyson and so on and so forth who partied and, and partied hard. I mean, would this affect you in the ring in the future? I mean, how will you be able to hold the GFW championship if you're, you know, coming off a hangover? No, you, you, well, but there is no hangover. I'll tell you why. There's bottle service all night, but you know who that's for? That's for everybody else. I think uh, Adonis could probably get it. That's this. One guy who doesn't drink, you're talking to him. E. Ryan Drake. Brother, the bottles are there. I'm hanging out, but I'm just there for the company. I'm just there for the party. And let's be honest, I'm there for the girls. Well, we got time for one final question, and uh, we're going to find out if uh, Ryan is awake today, or now, I should say. Wake up. Wake up. Hey, guys. Ryan Bowman from the thegorillaposition.com. Uh, this question is for Eli. Um, you mentioned that it, it was a long uh, journey to get to the title. What do you want to prove to the people in GFW and to the entire wrestling world now that you have this stage? And thanks for your time today, guys. Uh, the, the, the thing to prove is that for the longest time, they were all betting on the wrong horse. Uh, any horse that wasn't Eli Drake, they were betting on the wrong one. Uh, and so for a good long time, uh, people wondered as well, you know, how can, how can the wrestling business get better? How can the best wrestling business move on and move forward? And how can it get back to the, how can it get back to the, the good old days and the, the peaks? Well, it ain't going to be by going out there and doing 58 flips and breaking my ass by, uh, jumping off the top of the floor. It's going to be by being the... Biggest personality I can, while also being the best wrestler that I can in that ring. 
that is what is going to bring this thing forward. That's what's going to bring this company forward. That's what's going to bring this business forward, quite frankly, because that is what's going to draw in the average crowd. It's not going to be going out there and doing 58 splits. Now, that, that thing, doing all that stuff, sure, it might have its place. That's not what the average person wants to see. The average person, the average fan who's going to tune in and see, they want to see an Eli Drake. And there's only one. Guys, thank you very much. I'll give the uh, the f- first final thought to uh, Mr. Adonis. Uh, well, I'd like to say the pleasure was all mine, but honestly, I think, and I think Eli will agree, that the pleasure was everybody else's to have us. And uh, quite frankly, next time, I think we should even do this an hour later. And uh, once again, I mean, you know, if you're going to dress the champion, start out with uh, a thank you. I think that would be polite. And... Uh, Welcome to the new era of GFW wrestling. The DNA Drake and Adonis era has begun. Get ready. You know, I, I actually suggested that we start at uh, 3 Eastern time. Uh, and they told me that was excessive. So I said, all right, I'll meet you in the middle. I mean, let's go with 2 o'clock. But uh, here we are. And you got your global champion. Now, I heard Josh Matthews call me the defiant one. And guess what? He's right. Because here's a guy that not only defies the odds, defeating 19 other guys, outlasting 19 other guys from coast to coast. You've also got a guy who defies the odds as far as my career is concerned. You're talking 14 years, took me 10 years before I even made a dime in this business, 10 years before I ever got a contract with a major company, all because of politics, all because of BS. And here I stand now, atop this business, atop this industry, the greatest champion. I don't care what other companies out there. I don't care what anybody else says anywhere else, what other champions there are anywhere else. The top man, the number one man in this business is the live director. There ain't a question about it. The defiant one. If that's what you want to call me, that's exactly what I am. Because I do things my way. I've always done things my way. You want to talk about how I've gotten fired from other jobs. I've gotten fired from other companies. All that stuff. All because of me. Standing up for myself. Being a man. Being myself. And here I stand now and it's all paid off. Here I am. Global champion. And there's nobody in this business. Nobody on this earth that can touch me. That is not an insult. That is just a fact of life. Yeah.